Hey what's up guys, it's Visayo here and in this video we're looking at the Infinix Zero 5G. It's sort of the first budget 5G smartphone from Infinix. This device arrived not too long ago at my desk and I have decided to make a first impression video. My initial thoughts on this smartphone before I do my detailed review and show you guys all of its specs and features. If you're new to the channel, welcome. And if you're returning, welcome back guys. I'd love it if you hit that like button so more people can get to see the analysis and what we're about to share here. Alright, without further ado. Let's get to the video. This device comes in this pretty interesting box with the Zero 5G inscription all over it. You would see your RAM and storage sticker right on the top of it. And on the back of this box is where you get to see some of the specs and the features. The box, as I said, is interesting. And by interesting, I mean it's huge or would I say long these infinix boxes just keep getting longer and longer now taking the wrap off and you know opening the box the first thing you get inside the box is the infinix 05g with all of the specs out up front 5g 6 nanometer gaming processor uniframe unicurve design and a 30x zoom camera system now taking the sticker off of the device itself you see the shiny back that reflects a huge deal the camera bump looks slick as well and i like the way it looked underneath the device the box there holds a couple of things the same ejector tool the x Park Lucky Draw uh, card, the Zero 5G two-year warranty card, the dollar-esque membership sign-up card for X Club, and of course, a case that is designed with the 5G inscription on the back of it. There's a 33-watt charger in the box, USB-C cable, and headphones. Yes. This phone comes with headphones. Now, after spending a few days with this device, I have to say that I'm quite impressed with what I've seen so far. At first sight, this device seems not to be the most elaborate in terms of design, but it does make a simple but classy statement of its own in this cosmic black color, as Infinix calls it. If you are a smartphone enthusiast or have seen the Oppo Find X3, then you may also notice that this design is quite like how the device looks on the back, with a unicurve or uniframe design that just moves from top to bottom in one frame with a slight bump to the camera section. The plastic back of this device has a unique glossy feel to it that creates a nice effect when light hits it. After holding this device for a couple of minutes, I couldn't help but notice how much of a fingerprint magnet this is. However, when you add the case on this device, you can indeed eliminate this problem. After the pretty unique design on the back, the next most noticeable feature on this device is its camera system. Infinix has always been quite advanced when it comes to their camera placements and design and the Infinix Zero 5G follows the same route. This device has a triple camera and a quad flashlight set up on the back, 148 megapixel camera with a 13 megapixel camera as well and finally a 2 megapixel camera and you should be able to shoot 30x zoom. We'll be testing these out and more in a detailed review but on the outside though I do like how it's set up. On the front the selfie camera is a hole punch design, something I noticed is you know when the screen of the device is turned off you may not really see just how big of a selfie camera it is since it's all blacked out however once the screen comes on the selfie camera looks quite large and this may become intrusive under certain conditions that aside though this is a 16 megapixel camera that also comes with a dual flashlight setup to keep your selfies lit we'll be testing out this camera and just how effective the front facing flash is in our detailed review so do subscribe to the channel and of course turn on post notifications so you don't miss out on when that video drops. On the side of the phone, you will find the volume rockers and the power button that doubles as the fingerprint scanner of this device. On the left side is where you get the SIM and memory card slot. And other things to notice on the body of this phone are the fact that it has mono speakers, a USB Type-C charging port, a microphone and of course a earpiece port or headphone jack at the bottom of this device. Glad to see that someone is still keeping this. And the second microphone at the top of this device device also exists as well. A second microphone exists on the top. The bottom's mono speaker setup is one that I think might be a problem, but we'll just have to wait and see how that works. And so far since our test, we haven't really heard enough bass from the speakers. Turning the device on, we'll see that the device still runs on the classic XOS from Infinix. Depending on the duration of your usage, you might get different ads popping up and notifications that you do not want. And some people will probably not have a problem with this, that they just ignore their notifications. Going to the about section of the phone shows you all of the key features of this device. The unit that I got came with Android 11 as all the devices will. I am not yet clear on if or when there will be a compatible Android 12 OS update or how many Android updates that this will get 
but we'll wait and see. The processor on this device is a Helio MediaTek Dimensity 900 chip, which is sure to offer good performance and you know features. I will definitely be putting this one to the test in my detailed review. You can also see the camera features that I mentioned earlier. Then we can also see the RAM and ROM size. This device runs on 8 gigs of RAM and an extra 3 gigabytes to boost with memory fusion that takes something from your internal storage space to help you increase the performance of this device over time and allows it to multitask seamlessly. As for storage, this device has 128 gigs of storage, which is pretty decent depending on how you manage or mismanage it. If you need more storage, this device also supports the use of an external memory card of up to 256 gigabytes. And I think this flexibility is a big advantage. Up next is the battery size and screen resolution. 5000 milliamp hours of battery is pretty big, but the battery life of a device is usually relative to the user. Now, for some users, this battery may last more than a day on a full charge, and for others who are constantly using their smartphones to run apps and games, it may not last as long. The resolution of this device is full HD with a resolution of 1080p by 2460. At full HD, I'm excited to see how this device performs with media consumption and, of course, gaming. One important part of the display of this device is its 120Hz screen. Scrolling through the device, I could see the effect of having 120 hertz and how it made the scrolling a bit smoother. I would also love to see how this affects uh, high refresh games uh, in the full review again. Now, the biggest flex with this device is that it offers that lightning fast 5G network connectivity. Right now, it, there is no way to test 5G capability of this device, at least in Nigeria, since the 5G network is not available yet. However, December last year, MTN won the 5G license bid, which means that 5G will soon be available for Nigerians right? This is why I think the introduction of this phone is quite timely and I can't wait to see just how well it performs although we've been using it for a while and I just want to see how 5G would affect this device or maybe any device that even comes after it. Also I'd love to know how this level of internet speed would affect maybe battery life or general usage. Still for its price of about $300, the performance and 5G capability, I think this device may be worth your attention. So watch out for our detailed tests and all of its features. Well, these are just my first thoughts or first impressions on this device. And I'm doing more of an in-depth review on all of the features mentioned today, where I'll put all of them to the test and we'll see just how well they've performed. I've done some tests already, so do prepare for that one. So far, everything seems pretty good at the surface and on paper. Let me know your own thoughts on this device in the comment section below. Is there any question that you might have? Is there anything that you would want me to focus on specifically or test out for the in-depth review? Please let me know everything there in the comment section below. Be sure to hit that like button on this video so more people can see it and benefit from this knowledge. Also subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on any other videos. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the very next video.